This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. The Edward Snowden NSA story has jump-started an interesting discussion about the difference between independent, aggressive journalism and the elite access journalism we're accustomed to from the corporate media. A very clear example of the latter came on CBS's Face the Nation, when the show sought clarity about the government's secret spying programs from the man who ran the NSA under the Bush administration, Michael Hayden. The interview was all softballs, making this comment by host Bob Schieffer especially revealing. Uh, we appreciate you coming to talk to us this morning because uh, it's not easy to get people from the government that are in the government now. Do you think the government ought to be doing more to help the American people understand what's happening here? In this case, of course, the government isn't really in the business of helping people understand what's going on. And Schieffer didn't have Hayden on to ask him any tough questions. He wanted to be comforted. Another revealing moment came when Hayden made a reference to the Fourth Amendment rights of Americans. This caught our attention because back in 2006, amidst serious controversy over Bush's warrantless wiretapping, Hayden protested to a journalist that the Fourth Amendment didn't really say anything about probable cause. The Fourth Amendment actually uh, protects all of us against unreasonable search and seizure. But, that's the, what, the, that's but what the, it says. the measure is probable cause, I believe. The amendment says unreasonable search and seizure. But does it not say probable? The, no. the, 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 the court standard, the legal standard, search and the legal standard is probable cause. Just to be very clear, okay, and believe me, if there's any amendment to the Constitution that employees of the National Security Agency are familiar with, it's the fourth. Hayden is now making the rounds as a big defender of NSA surveillance. Don't expect people like Bob Schieffer to ask him anything that will make him squirm. Here we go again with news outlets wringing their hands over possibly being biased against bigots. Earlier this year it was the Washington Post, then USA Today. Now NPR's All Things Considered is taking up the question of whether their coverage of gays and lesbians no longer being denied the same marriage rights of heterosexuals was slanted in favor of the expansion of human rights. Here's Audie Cornish. Yesterday's decisions by the Supreme Court on gay marriage brought widespread celebration and a lot of coverage of those celebrations. But cultural conservatives who oppose same-sex marriage believe recent coverage of the issue has not fairly reflected their views. They may have a point. Note that it's only conservative opponents she's concerned with, and not those who didn't think economic rights should be attached to marital status at all. Well, as a group that spent decades demonstrating media's marginalization of a range of politically powerless groups, this sort of display is rather remarkable. Journalists always say they strive for balance, but if you ask them if they feel the need to balance those who believe the earth is spherical with those who disagree, you're accused of being facetious. So there does have to come a point at which journalists decide that there are some perspectives that don't require an opposing view. We hope that NPR and plenty of other outlets, judging by some of what we saw on TV after the DOMA ruling, will agree that human beings should not be denied human rights is one of those perspectives. And finally, do U.S. media think the future of the planet is some kind of joke? You might get that impression. Think Progress showed that the Sunday Beltway chat shows didn't so much as mention Barack Obama's June 25th climate policy speech. Comedy shows did pay attention, especially The Daily Show, which is, you know, a fake newscast. But it wasn't just those Sunday shows. ABC World News and CBS Evening News gave the speech about 19 seconds, long enough to say that it happened. NBC Nightly News clocked in with a more than two-minute report, which said what was said and also what it might mean. That was the best, better than the other broadcast outlets, but still a minute shorter than the fake newscast. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.